Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to play around with pastels. A while back I did a similar scene in charcoal. Now I'm going to try this in pastels. I'm going to use pastel pencils and soft pastels. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch out the shape of some clouds on the horizon. I'm going to have some tall looming clouds and I'm going to use a white pastel pencil for this. Uh, notice how I'm drawing this irregular jagged uh, shape to show that irregular shape of the clouds and I want to, I want to have a large bulging shape in the middle. Anyway, let me say a few words about the materials because I know that people are going to ask. I'm working on uh, sandpaper. Uh, it's not an artist quality sanded paper, it's actual sandpaper. But it's fine sandpaper. It's a 1000 grit uh, wet to dry sandpaper that you can find in any hardware store, I think. And it's a great surface for pastels and colored pencils. Anyway, for the sky, I tried playing around with a couple of different blues and for the most part I used a metal thalo blue or a, something or some similar color I don't really know what it's called in the in the range of pastels that I have and then I used this light blue on top of that with a touch of uh, light ultramarine and then I started blending that uh, as for the pastels I'm using, I'm mostly going to use the Kohinoor pastel pencils and the Kohinoor uh, soft pastel sticks. I'm also going to use a few of the Master Touch woodless pastel pencils. So I, there's no particular reason why I'm using these, it's just that those are the ones that I have and they have served me well for my pastel drawings even though to be honest, most of the time I work in colored pencil or chalk or some other medium. Anyway, as you can see, this is coming along nicely and uh, I'm able to blend this pretty smoothly. Now let me say a few words about blending here because if you try this, you you might run into some minor problems. Uh, this is sandpaper. Even though it's fine sandpaper, it's going to be gentler on your fingers than uh, you know rough, low-grit sandpaper it can still um, damage your skin if you press too hard. So my advice is to be very patient and to move that pigment on the surface of the paper gently and to, you, to work slowly in small circular motions and that way you'll be able to blend as smoothly as I can, as I am. And uh, there's really no point in pressing harder because that's not going to make it blend more easily and it's also going to damage your fingers more rapidly. If you feel like you can't really blend or you don't have enough material, well, just put down some more pastel and problem solved. Because you'll see that this surface actually um, retains or holds more of the material than regular paper and uh, this textured surface, this rough textured surface, grabs onto the pastel dust a lot more so that there's going to be a lot less residue. Anyway, let me get back to talking about the drawing process. Uh, now I'm going to work on some clouds here and uh, I'm going over the edge of the clouds and now I'm pressing a little bit more and I'm making a little bit more definite and a little bit more permanent marks here. So the initial lines, the initial shapes were just the sketch. Now I'm going to push in a little bit more and I'm going to draw uh, some lighter shapes. And in addition to the white pastel pencil, I'm also going to use a, a white soft pastel. And that's going to allow me to draw some of these larger uh, marks, uh, white uh, marks, because uh, there's a lot of pastel in there now. And at, the, at this stage it kind of looks like a foamy crest of a wave and no doubt you could draw waves with pastels uh, just as easily but here I'm going to draw clouds and I think that clouds are very easy to draw in pastels and it's probably 
um, I think that when it comes to drawing clouds, pastels are probably the best medium for it. Uh, anyway, at the bottom I added a touch of uh, some other colors, uh, a touch of that light blue and even a touch of red. I want to create some reddish and purplish tones there at the bottom where the clouds are going to be a little bit darker. At the top they're going to be lighter. Um, uh, I want to have a cleaner edge against the sky. Now to control the, the edge uh, in terms of uh, whether you want a clean edge or a soft edge you can uh, do that easily with your fingers if you want to keep an edge clean just don't blend over it, use more of the pencil or the pastel or maybe when you blend uh, pull downwards um, how should I put this uh, away from the edge and if you want to make a blurry edge you just uh, blend over the edge with your finger so it's useful to do both actually because uh, clouds are like that sometimes they're a little bit fluffy in some places, in other places they can be a little bit more hard edged against the sky where you have a, a clean edge or a, a clean transition between uh, that uh, area of lighter value and the bluish background behind it. Now to further define the shape of those clouds I started adding some bluish uh, tones and uh, some other colors to darker colors to break up that large mass of clouds into slightly smaller shapes basically to uh, define the topography of those clouds a little bit better because clouds are three-dimensional objects and uh, if you want to make them look more three-dimensional if you want to create a feeling of depth you have to shade you have to add darker colors as well you can't just leave them white and when you create a sufficient range of value from the darker tones to the lighter ones uh, they will appear more three-dimensional because those lighter tones that remain like the, that bulging shape in the middle uh, will appear like they're closer to our viewpoint like they're popping out um, uh, out of the mass of that mass of clouds and we can use the, uh, these darker, slightly darker colors, like I'm using this um, bluish color here. This is something like an um, um, ultramarine or a light ultramarine. And I'm using it to define those shadow areas in the clouds. At the bottom I used a little bit more of it because I want uh, some darker clouds here, closer to the horizon. And I'm even going to add a touch of black to make the color a bit duller and a bit darker. So I'm just playing around with colors. I'm by no means an expert in colors or color theory. As often I just sort of play around with colors to see what I can come up with. And with pastels that's actually very easy to do because uh, whatever you do is very easy to cover and very easy to fix and if I, uh, it, honestly if you were working on regular paper uh, that would be an exercise in frustration because there, there would be too much residue and it would be difficult to layer uh, one layer on top of another but on this sanded surface it just grabs on to the pastel so well that you can easily add layers you can add lighter details on top of the darker ones you can add darker ones on top of the lighter ones you can do all that you can blend you can do whatever you like um, they're a little bit more difficult to work with when it comes to precision and some tiny details and finer textures i think that colored pencils are a lot better for that but when it comes to these larger shapes and larger contrasts uh, there's nothing quite like pastels. Um, as you can see I'm mostly blending with my finger here because precision is not particularly important but in addition to my fingers I can also use some brushes and maybe tortillions and things like that just for some smaller details where I need to push that pastel dust around. 
Uh, occasionally I'm just going back in and uh, revising the shape of the clouds that, that outer shape the outline of the clouds to make it a little bit more irregular or maybe a little bit more to my liking. Now here at the bottom <clears throat> I drew some uh, hills in the distance and here as well I played around with some different colors. I uh, used some darker tones and then worked on top of that with some bluish colors until I decided that I definitely needed to make it a bit more bluish so I put in a little bit more of those colors that I used for the sky as well but it is going to remain darker because I I need contrast between this part of the scene and the clouds. Uh, now um, I haven't talked about the light source but I think you can tell in my scene that the light is coming a bit more from the left so the shadows are more on the right. I'm going to try to stay consistent with that even though uh, with, with the irregular shapes of these clouds it's uh, often a little bit difficult to tell. Uh, for some of these peaks of those hills or mountains in the distance, uh, usually you want to keep a clean edge, but sometimes you can maybe play around with that a little bit to create that cloudy effect, maybe make it look like in some places the edge is a little bit blurry, like there are some low clouds and maybe some rain in the distance, who knows what. Now as for the mid-ground and the foreground, we're going to have to come up with something a little bit different here. Uh, here we're going to use some slightly warmer tones and first I'm going to start with some light yellowish ochre tones uh, to draw some fields in the middle. So that's going to be my mid-ground I suppose and uh, I'm going to use a a bit more of these uh, golden, I don't know, golden yellowish ochre tones and maybe a touch of uh, reddish tones here and there because I, I have those reddish tones on the clouds as well. In the middle I want to make it a little bit lighter. So first I did a bit of blending and then I uh, decided that I needed to establish a bit of contrast between some of those uh, lighter parts of the field and the darker ones. In the foreground I'm going to have just like a grassy area uh, with a few trees and bushes but I'm going to get to defining that a little bit later. I still haven't quite finished uh, with the mid-ground area and those fields. I need to add some more details to those and maybe create some textures, maybe some suggestions of um, of some lines in those fields, uh, some rows of crops and things like that. And uh, I'm going to have like a group of bushes just to emphasize the contrast between this foreground area and that midground area. And for those, I'm just going to use a little bit of that dark brown pastel and then work on top of it with a, with a black pastel pencil to create some interesting looking shapes. Here in the middle and a little bit to the left I, I want those fields to be a little bit lighter. I want more light to be breaking through here in this part of the scene and I want the right side to be a little bit darker like it's uh, like there's more shadow there because of the clouds and the mountains. So the clouds are allowing a little bit more sun, a little bit more light onto this part of the scene. So I made that a bit darker and I left a bit more shadow to the right. Um, also I did a bit more defining of those uh, low clouds in the distance and I added some touches of blue here and there. I made some smaller changes to the overall shapes of the clouds, added some smaller shapes here and there just to make the overall shape of the clouds a little bit more to my liking. And now I'm going to move on to the foreground area. I'm just going to slap a huge tree here in the foreground. Why? 
because I can. That's why. Now I know that some people will think that I may be ruining the scene or maybe that this is a risky move, but don't worry. Um, I think it will be a nice, it will be an interesting detail for the foreground. So I'm going to put a huge poplar tree swaying in the wind swaying in the uh, in the wind from right, right to left uh, first I'm going to draw the base, the tree trunk and some larger boughs growing to the sides and, and some smaller branches then and then I'm going to work on top of that with uh, dark green pastel to draw some foliage this is going to be the shape of that tree like I said it's going to be twisting or bending slightly to the left because of the wind and we sure had a lot of stormy wind here where I live the last couple of days and I've seen a lot of scenes like this but probably a lot worse because um, I lost a couple of trees in my backyard so this is going to be a gentler wind and a gentler scene gentler landscape but I still want to have a little bit of wind in my scene a little bit of movement in there so I'm going to use uh, mostly a combination of a dark green pastel stick and I'm going to work on top of that a bit with a black pastel pencil and that way hopefully I'm going to be able to imitate the appearance of foliage and to create a more or less realistic looking tree for my foreground because the foreground needs to be more detailed and more interesting than the background so I'm gonna try to do that so here you can see me dabbing that pastel stick that dark green pastel stick creating that foliage so the idea is to create either suggestions of individual leaves or clusters of leaves and you want to vary their size, the direction, the shape a little bit so that it would look as organic as possible. You don't want to make them look too uniform and you don't, certainly don't want to make the shapes look too large because these poplars have a lot of these smaller trees and I want to imitate not just the overall shape of the tree but also the shape of the foliage and how it grows and the, the, how the branches grow so the whole thing, because um, you know, you wanna you wanna capture the general shape, the general idea, because you can't draw every single leaf. So here I'm going in with a a bit of black pencil, black pastel pencil, to draw some smaller dark shapes uh, on top of those uh, dark green shapes. And what that will do is it will create a more realistic appearance of foliage because when you look at foliage at the distance, well, it depends on the lighting, but most of the time it just looks like a whole bunch of, you know, uh, lighter and darker shapes. And here I, uh, I'm uh, using these two colors to imitate that combination of lighter and darker shapes. Overall, I want the tree and the foliage to appear, um, I'd say, fairly dark against that sky so that I could create some tension and contrast with the, with the sky. Now, if you've been following my channel, you probably, you've probably seen a similar scene and a similar tree because I've done a charcoal drawing called, and that was a vertical drawing uh, that was called uh, wind in the poplars or poplars in the wind and um, that was a slightly different scene which was mostly focused on the tree in the middle here the tree is just one of the elements and I uh, kind of put it to the left side so that it would balance out that large mass of clouds uh, which is a bit more to the right anyway the tree is now mostly done and I'm moving on to the grassy foreground area where I'm starting to introduce some other colors in addition to the green I want to have some brownish and some ochre tones to make, make the grass and the ground a bit more interesting I want to 
uh, make it look like maybe there's some dry grass here and there, like maybe um, the, the, some dirt is visible, not all of it is covered by grass and things like that. Now here on the edge of that grassy area, I'm going to draw some more bushes, like a large hedgerow of, um, of some bushes and maybe some distant trees, who knows. And I did those again with a dark green pastel and I worked on top of that with a black pastel pencil defining some shadow areas, defining the shape a little bit and uh, maybe adding a little bit more uh, contrast in that foliage and a little bit more texture to it. And I think this uh, group of bushes makes for a nice contrast against the field in the middle. Uh, now, uh, once that is done, I need to add a bit more detail to this grass here in the foreground. I added a bit of shadow uh, under the tree, um, a little bit more to the right because the shadows are more to the right because the, the light source is coming from above, but it's coming more a little bit more from the left. And now I'm just adding some random details to the grassy area. Just dabbing on that, holding the uh, soft pastel sideways, trying to produce some suggestions of some slightly taller blades of grass uh, closer to our viewpoint and maybe some slightly smaller groups or clumps of grass which are a little bit further away from our a viewpoint. So I'm just playing around with that foreground area and trying to make it a bit more interesting and a bit more detailed, or at least to create an illusion of detail that would entertain the eye of the viewer to uh, make the foreground area a bit more interesting. Anyway, the scene is almost done as you can tell. If you haven't subscribed already, don't forget to subscribe. Um, check out my other videos. I have lots of landscapes in many different media and techniques. And uh, give me a like and subscribe and comment. Let me know what you think about this. For longer videos, of course, uh, you can always go and check out my Patreon because you'll find a lot more content there, a, a lot of uh, raw footage and full-length narrated videos and things like that. Well, there it is. My drawing's done. Thanks for watching. I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.